What's going on, everybody? I'm your host this week on the Marvel League Podcast. Will, with me, we have the regular folks. All right, co-host Luke. As always. Uh, Michael. What a dooski. Nick. Yay, first post-crisis episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which was a crazy. total disaster, by the way. But we, we, have a, we actually have a leftover from the crisis with us. We have a Tim, that guy who was, what is this, your first podcast? Yep. How's it going, in, in, everyone? I gained the ability to hop universes from the crisis. So he, he's the he's the Barry Allen. This is the amalgam verse now. Oh gosh. Yeah. Oh, what? I wish they would bring back Amalgam. No, they're so so horrible. That was trash. It, no, God, please! I want to see how bad it would be today. Uh, bring bring me. We wouldn't uh, have there's... the awful '90s artwork today. That, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Now we just have um, Umberto Gonzalez. I tell you what, if they would bring back the Amalgam Verse, let's just have Brian Michael Bendis do the writing. Uh, no, that that was actually a rumor that Bendis was going to do a, a Amalgam 2. Oh my with, god. Uh, Miles Morales fused with Superboy for a new Spider-Boy. Oh, oh my fire. god. That would, be, that would be absolutely terrible. That sounds um, awesome. Expe- no, yeah. I fused him with Static. Let's go ahead. Oh and, God! Let's... Yes, that'd be amazing, especially with the Venom Blast. Dude, oh my God! Dude, so one of those webs, you're donezo. Yeah, man, it's over. Let's just go ahead and get uh, Rob Liefeld to do the artwork. You know what? I'm okay with that. Just to... no. Yeah, we're, it's <laughs> Rob Liefeld, Umberto <laughs> Gonzalez, Greg Land, Dan Slott. <laughs> no, only Greg Land. <laughs> Wait, who's Umberto oh, Gonzalez? God. Isn't that El Mayimbo? El Mayimbo. <laughs> who's El Mayimbo? Uh, or... <laughs> no, Umberto Ramos. Or Umberto Ramos. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. That yeah. That, yeah, that's Humberto Gonzalez and Umberto Ramos. Oh, <laughs> you guys are okay. getting your scoops wrong. And that's yeah. El Scoopo. El Scoopo. El Scoop King. <laughs> but yeah, we, before we before we get into our actual topics, Tim, is there anything you uh, anything you want to say? Uh, yes, uh, you can save 10% off any purchase of Loot Crate by going to our specialty link, lootcrate.com slash hybrid network and using the code BRIDGE10. This month for December, the topic is Revolution, has a bunch of stuff from Mr. Robot, Firefly, and the new Assassin's Creed movie. And each month in every Loot Crate you get, you get various different things. You get a guaranteed t-shirt, you have things like stickers, keychains, pop figures, various limited figures and a bunch of other cool stuff you can get from this so like i said go to lootcrate.com slash hybrid network use the code bridge 10 and save 10 percent on a- any of your purchases there awesome you guys hear that pop vinyls go pop get them vinyls. pop <laughs> vinyls it, it, i swear if i don't get a firefly pop with this month i'm going to rage you're going to cause a revolution? I'm going to cause a revolution. <laughs> I'm calling for a revolution right now. I want my Firefly Pop or Revolution, one or the other. Now, we'll just have to wait and see, though. I absolutely adore Loot Crate, and I cannot wait for this month's box. Dude, how funny would it be if they gave a Loot Crate Pop vinyl? Like, it's just, a, it's just like a Loot Crate box as a pop. What? Like, <laughs> what? the actual subscription box? It's box. They just gave a box Too as a pop. Up. It's just a it's just a bobblehead box. It's too meta. <laughs> it's too but, meta. Um, it would never but, work. But spe- speaking of things that we're gonna have to wait for, there's a big, pretty almost confirmed rumor going around that Marvel vs. Capcom four is coming out in twenty seventeen. So uh Tim what do we uh, what do we think about that? Well, I'm excited for it. I've played every Marvel vs. Capcom game that's come out, including Street Fighter vs. X-Men, so I always look for new entries in the series. Yeah, I still have been meaning to buy uh, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, money-wise. It's a fun game. It has a really cool cast behind it, but the issue is that with all the new casting changes that they've done in recent shows, the cast isn't going to be as good for this time around. No, because they're going to use the same ones that they use on all the shows. Because they like to do that, even if they aren't as good of voices as they used to have. As I, long as they keep old school Dante, I don't give a fuck. Well, they're going to keep the they're going to keep the Capcom voices. It's the Marvel voices that I have an issue with. Oh no, I mean the characters because uh, they tried to put new school Dante in uh, Super Smash Brothers PlayStation, 
And uh, no. no just, just no. Well, but, I mean, they they put him into it just because the game was coming out around that time, but old school Dante yeah. was like in Project Cross Zone. Yeah, oh yeah, he was. Him and Virgil. Oh god, wait, did you buy that game? <laughs> no, I just know the characters that are in it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I always wonder if anyone bought X on or X. Dude, I can remember yeah. playing Marvel vs. Capcom 3 when I was younger, and it was quite hard, actually. I think, anyways. Um, I, I think it was one of the harder fighting games I've played. It, in, in... What I always find with Marvel vs. Capcom is that it's easy to play, but hard to be good at. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 It sounds about right. It really is. Yeah. I mean, and generally that's for, like, a lot of fighting games, but... Um, yeah, th- this one, man, it, it was just it was just rough, honestly, to to, to play sometimes. Um, I'm I'm hyped for four though. I I hope that this is actually coming. Like it's it's gonna be confirmed. So, um, yep. are there are there like anything you guys are looking forward to, like in Capcom Four? <laughs> uh, I'm looking uh, forward for the X Men not to be in there. I'm just kidding. Uh, what? Well, yeah, I mean, there are a few additional rumors behind it, uh, including that it's going to be exclusive to PlayStation, so it's going to be mentioned at uh, PlayStation Experience at the beginning of this month, Ooh. and uh, that the X Men and Fantastic Four aren't going to be in the game. Uh, Is that hundred percent confirmed, or so they're not confirmed? They're all just rumors at this point that came from the same one that pseudo confirmed that it was happening. Watch yeah. Nick actually be right, and it's just all MCU characters. Uh, I hope not. Uh, I mean, with the slow re-inclusion of the X-Men and everything, I think maybe this is what they've been building up to. It's just like, oh, no, you're not getting them in the MCU, but you're getting them in a new game. Maybe, but <laughs> even with the, even with all that, like, with the exception of, like, Avengers Academy and maybe their Zoom Zoom game, like, all their other, like, mobile games and Marvel heroes have the X-Men characters in their games. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense. Why would you not have it? Like, have any of the X-Men. At, at least freaking Wolverine, I mean, come on. And they uh, definitely no, need no to have Wolverine as the them. poster character for, like, every game. I know, but, I mean, like, wouldn't it be cool to have, like, uh, Colossus and a couple other characters? Well, Colossus wasn't in three, so, like, the only ones that I would expect were, like, Wolverine, Magneto, and Storm. Storm would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've never actually. I don't think I've ever played Marvel vs. Capcom. Really? Now that I think okay. about it, I don't. I really don't think I, I have. Guess. I was more of a Marvel Ultimate Alliance guy. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, the one, the thing that I want is I want Mega Man to come back because he was one of my favorite characters to play as in one and two. Dude, they, yeah, man, they got to get a Battle Network Mega Man in there. Daddy XE. Yeah. I'm, I just want the original one back that could transform into a bigger form and then just fly forward across the screen. It looked awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm looking forward to, like, a next-gen version, too. That's going to be pretty nifty. And, like, hopefully getting into it this time around. So, I'm down. Why not? Yeah, Nick is down. We know he's down. I don't play any Marvel otherwise. games. So I... yeah, and in, terms of, in terms of it well, being a, a PlayStation game. exclusive, which some people have an issue with, I can honestly get it from Capcom's perspective. I mean, it's the same reason why they made Street Fighter 4 PlayStation exclusive. One, uh, Sony might be funding it, which could be the reason why. But also, most Japanese companies tend to fixate solely on what Japan would want, and almost no one in Japan has an Xbox 360 or PC. Boom. Bam. Not 360, That's Xbox guy. One. So, Most of them just have, <laughs> what, Nintendos, uh, Nintendo consoles, handhelds, and Sony products? Yeah, yeah man. PlayStation 4 is probably the biggest seller for home consoles there, but mostly they play on their phones. Sony Master Race, baby. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Mm-hmm. It sucks if you only have an Xbox One or a PC that the game would be harder to play, but I can get it from Capcom's perspective why they would go that route. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it, I get, it, it just makes sense. I just imagine this, they'd probably, it'd be more like a time release that they'd probably just port it at some point. Probably at, probably at some point if it gets uh, big enough with it, but I don't think they have plans of porting Street Fighter V yet. I, it might be on PC at this point, I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you know. Any, 
any any other any other things we gotta say about this this rumor mill of brewing? Well, I'm one thing I can say is, uh, isn't the rumors are like or like Marvel saying how they're gonna like revamp their video game end? Uh, how I hope this mm-hmm. is a sign that they're actually trying to get that going. The, yeah, they yeah. said that with uh, Spider Man PS4, they're trying to go into a whole new thing with their video games, which I hope is true. Oh God, uh, yes. This, which this might be a thing in the, this might be a step in the right direction. Maybe we'll get something in the vein of like an Ultimate Alliance three, but not exactly. Yeah, Tim, Marvel Heroes is kind of that. Tim, you remember how triggered yeah. I was at that Marvel Games panel? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We went to the Marvel Interactive and Games panel, which was mostly just them going over all their various online services, which yeah, literally the, had the, like nothing to do with games. Yeah, they the, the all, thi- they mentioned gaming at the end, but it was. Uh, Marvel heroes and their mobile stuff talking about tie-ins to Doctor Strange. I guess, like, like in hindsight, I, I should have known better to think that, like, in that panel room, at that at that particular time, they were gonna, like, you know, release a bunch of new information, but I just, uh, man, did I want to hear some stuff about, like, their new their new console deals they worked out, and, like, because apparently they got this big this big plan to bring, like, these awesome, you know, like, sandbox console games... Uh, you know, so I'm like, okay, you know, let, let's hear more. Let's hear about this Spider-Man game. So show, show some gameplay footage or something. Give me something, and we literally got none of that. And I was like, well, that was yep. a waste of what an hour and a half. Yep. I didn't expect them to do like mostly game stuff. I would have, I would have liked it with that, but uh, I can, I do understand why they wouldn't do it there. It is not really a press con, so there's really no one who they would be showing it off to. Uh, you know, like the fans that, that, that took their time to go and, and sit and watch, and because I could have been doing other stuff at other panels, but no, no, I I I get what you're saying though. Like it would it would probably be better if they you know it was at an actual press release. Um, it's just like damn it, like I traveled halfway across the country. <laughs> like, give me something. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah. But ho- hopefully, we can get some good good uh news here and and confirmation uh for marvel versus capcom 4 because i am really looking forward to it honestly i'd love to see them do kind of what uh dc superheroes online does and have a console version of marvel heroes because as much as uh as much as i love playing it on my desk on my laptop i would much prefer it on a on on my ps3 where it has more space (laughs) Well, I, not, not I honestly, more space, but I like, honestly liked having it on my computer more because I quickly ran out of space in my PS3 for DC o- online. Yeah, but for me, it'd be like, well, less frame rate drops. <laughs> Wait, less frame rate drops on what? The PS3 or PS4? On the on my computer. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That, that. Like, master I, race. Well, dude, yeah, you, I have, usually with I have uh, enough race. I have enough space. It's just not a gaming computer, is you, the thing. It's well, just you, a regular computer. See, usually with games like that, you have a good chance of it coming to PC. If if not right away, at some point, it'll get ported over, maybe on Steam. So. Oh no, Heroes is already on PC. Oh, Heroes. Yeah, yeah. Heroes. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I thought we were talking about Capcom still. No. Okay. I'm sorry. Jeez, where have I been? <laughs> under, under your PC rock. On a boat. But, uh, what? I'm just putting this mess around. Did Michael just right, try so to I... cuck Will? <laughs> he tried it. <laughs> Bitch tried it. But uh, speak, speaking of uh, speaking of characters, it, you know you know who was a pretty decent character in MVC three? Uh, Doctor Strange. Boy, boy, was he in that game? We... Like, I couldn't tell you. Like, he was in I'm Ultimate. Bad. Doctor Strange is that boy. Oh. Well, he was in Ultimate, but we also have some new Doctor Strange concept art. So, uh, what do, what do we think about that? Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that, like, the concept art to me is a lot better than what we got. I, I'm not, like, upset with what we got, but it could have definitely been more comic <laughs> Disappointed. Accurate. Like, well, like, here's the thing, like, uh, a lot of times, they change things, like, they change the aesthetic of, of, of characters, their, in their looks, and the way they dress, or the way that they're designed for, a, for you know, for sp- uh, specific reasons, like... One being that not everything from the comic will translate mm-hmm. well onto screen. However, when you're handling like a giant CG character, I don't think it really matters. Not really, especially especially with how little screen time Dormammu actually had. I mean, 
yeah, he had a body, but you mostly seen his face. So, like, looking at some of the concept art, I just don't, like, why would you go with what you went with when you could have just done that and it would have looked fine? It, it's a mm -hmm. giant CG face. I, I don't understand, like, why they decided yeah. to just make him black and purple versus, you know, a little more comic accurate, maybe added some red, some flames in the background. Like, it would have just... I don't know. It would have pleased me a lot more, I think. It would have made the scenes more enjoyable. Now, given I still enjoyed the scenes, it's just, I don't know why you went that route. Um, I I would actually like to hear, maybe in some kind of commentary, maybe in the Blu-ray cut, of, like, you know, having Derrickson talk about why they decided to go the less comic-accurate route with him, rather than just have him be, like, a flaming head. Yeah, that's a... That's a weird thing that happened. It might have with been like a mocap issue with it when they did like the facial recognition for him. From what I read, from what I read uh, online, like uh, Benedict Cumberbatch was the one who suggested doing that type of capture for Dormammu on set. Well, I think it's just because Benedict has had experience yeah. with smog and the. I was gonna say, series. but like, what, what's the problem? Yeah, with but it? it may have been it may have been hard to graft that specific of like i don't know what what's up with the coloring but it might have been hard to graft the specific effect to like looking more comic accurate so they had to adjust it just enough to work with it uh yeah. i don't know uh maybe that... if they did it it would look like a jack-o-lantern or something that's what <laughs> well because like here's the thing is because like his face was like ever moving too like his face never really like was like you know, like, his cheeks, his forehead, and all that. Like, they had, like, these weird black lines that just kept moving. Like, yeah. honestly, like, waves. Which, uh, I kind of like the aesthetic so, like, of that, but, I mean, I just think that... I think if you can... If you can add effects like that in mocap, I really don't see a problem with them mm -hmm. adding some red in there. You know what I mean? Like I said, I don't know what's up with the color. I'm just saying, like, the general aesthetic of the face. <laughs> right. No, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, definitely. I, I just, like I don't know. I just wanted him yeah. to be a little more recognizable. But anyways, Michael, what were you saying? Yeah, no, I was gonna say, you know, it's it's weird. Like every time one of these movies comes out, it's always like they release the concept art, and it's just like, why didn't you go with it? But they they obviously probably had the reasons. But some of these look really cool. Um, I probably would have gone with, with yeah. the concept art, but um, but that's that, just me. that's a thing that's been happening a, a little bit that, more often for some reason with Marvel films, and I don't know what it is because the same thing kind of happened with Spider Man, where it's just like, oh, that was a pretty good suit. Then we saw the concept version, and we're like, fuck, that was perfect except for the uh, pill bug. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not too sure. Yo, Nick, what are your thoughts on it, bro? Because I know you you have some... Uh, Choice words. Yeah, interesting the movie. thoughts on it. <laughs> no, but you've seen the picture. The pictures, yeah. I mean, like, it, the concept art does look a little better. It's just... Uh... Just the overall design of both the concept art and the movie is kind of weird to me. Like, um doing this big kind of giant being but yeah I don't know yeah the eyes and the nose don't do it for you eh? no I, I don't know I was hoping it would be like just some demon thing with like a flaming head but whatever yeah like okay like I know some like like some people have speculated like since <clears throat> since Dormammu is technically timeless uh, there is this one theory that proposed that maybe in the MCU Dormammu just doesn't just dwell within the dark dimension, but he almost is the dark dimension. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so like he, since he is that dimension, he doesn't really have like a physical form. So he kind of just took, took a form that would be recognizable to someone that isn't from that dimension. So, you know, IE Dr. Strange or whoever else. Um, so I, I don't know. I just think that, um, me personally, I would have liked to have seen something from the concept art also too. He could have been big, but he didn't really have to be giant because I would have been okay with him um, being small enough to actually see him walk around. You know, like maybe like this be the size of like Giant Man or something. You know what I mean? I mean, I kind of, I kind of yeah. liked him being that big, but um, I do, I do kind of see what you're saying. Well, because I'm sure well, that we'll get something similar to that in like a future film. Well, it's yeah, because well, it's because Dormammu was just like. <laughs> uh, you've come to die, and then like it was just like evil take over the world. You must die. And as as clever as the scene was, and I really loved how Doctor Strange defeated him. Mm -hmm. um, he could have, I, I don't know. It would have just been more interesting, I think, to actually see Doctor Strange and Dormammu 
have like like have a chat with each other. You know what I mean? Like like actually like morally debate over why why he shouldn't take over Earth. And I, yeah. I feel like I feel like that would have been a lot more intriguing. And I actually see them two face to face, like maybe not on Doctor Strange's level, but just like an actual body and smaller walking around like yeah with, dude he like, needed his like armor fl- and that, that flaming head yeah that's what i'm saying like armor flaming head and him like walking actually like walking around with dr strange and them two having, having a discussion uh, i do i feel that i do have a question though like if he's what is up with the flaming skull because that invokes more of a demonic look than the one of an extra dimensional being well he's an extra dimensional demon oh okay <laughs> Well, like you know, what? I he's one of the lords of hell it? in the Marvel universe. Okay, then yeah, yeah. there's like okay. seven of them. Then that does make sense. Uh, Luke, like you were saying, you know what'd been cool though, um, if they did do that, like he's like when they first start off their conversation, or whatever. Doctor Strange is kind of like, can we get a little more interpersonal or some shit? And then he comes into the form of that, or like some like uh, some variation of it. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, and see, that's what I'm saying. If, if that theory would would be correct that he is the dark dimension, you would think that. He could really just take any form that he wants, and again, <laughs> Dude, why didn't he just... take a physical form and like walk around? That's what I'm saying. Like, like that would have been more intriguing to actually see him take a physical form with like his classic armor and like you know his like his flaming body. <laughs> that would have been, I, I think, a little more ominous than just a f- like you know a floating purple face, purple and black face. But I know. Maybe okay, we'll get I that in Doctor Strange. He had too. a body, but you barely see the body. You like ba- you see his arm and shoulder. You don't really like see him. I don't know. You, you guys get with like like the gist of what I'm. Dude, saying. What did he say? What did he say in the movie? He's like, "You've come to die." Yeah, that, that's oh, yeah. that's it. That's his only line. <laughs> no, it's not no, his. He, only he line. says more stuff than that. That's just what he says. Like, like, what does he sound like loop. though? You've come to die. Oh uh, really? Yeah, something like yeah. that. Oh, that's lame. But but a, but a little bit more <laughs> Britterish. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, no, I, he actually he actually stops midway through. He says. Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, he does do that too. Wait, what? Wait, oh no, he says, "What is this?" Because he's never, um, he's never experienced time before because he's timeless. So, oh, no, I was totally like trolling uh, from uh, when Ronan said that, like totally out of his like his uh, his mannerisms and accent. Oh, okay, okay. Remember in Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> right on, right on. Well, anyways, that that is what could have been, but we didn't get it. Damn. Yeah, that this seems to be happening a lot more, and I'm a little concerned. But uh, yeah. speaking of other depressing news, <laughs> God, just the, the sad cast. Um, <laughs> it's all rumors and depression. We've had we've had worse episodes. We have, but I mean, just like the news wise. Um, so let's see. Anyways, the, there's a comment from Andrew Garfield from Variety, uh, saying that he was heartbroken over the result of the uh, Amazing Spider-Man films, and personally. Of the five movies we've seen so far, Amazing Spider-Man 1 is still one of my favorite superhero films. Like, it is my favorite Spider-Man film, because it just... It, it hit me at a perfect time when I really needed it. But, uh... Yeah. What do you guys think about his comment over at Variety? <laughs> Dude, he was crying. It was a video interview, too. He was, like, tearing up. Yeah, so was he actually freaking well, tearing up? Because I read, I read the, the thing. Did, uh... Yeah, I believe, what, him and a- uh, Amy Adams did an interview together... Yeah, it was called. It's called Actors on Actors. It's like the, one of their segments on Variety. Yeah, so they so they were asked the question of what it's like to to film a superhero movie, and um, you know, Amy Adams said, you know, the she worst loved... actor to ask. Yeah, so, Amy so Adams she... will say, "I'll let you know when I film one." <laughs> <laughs> Out. Yeah. Why do people like Amy uh, Adams I think so partially, much? Partially, like Tim, you're Tim, you're so right, but I think uh, par- partially that's because you know she's not. She's not really a superhero, and but, you know. but like br- brief aside, why do people love Amy Adams so much, and why is her hair so fucking wrong in Man of Steel? God, I'm not a DC, no, I'm not a DC not, fan, but just get her hair right. It's not it's red, goddammit, it, it's black. Dude, Amy Adams is hot. That's why. Yeah, it makes her other... look like Lana Lang. God. Yeah, why it's does she look like can Lana? Of worms. It's Lana Lang, not Lois Lane. You dumbass. Don't let those no really elves throw you off. DC been taking L since before so, they even knew. So what's the full thing that he said beyond being heartbroken? What about it broke his heart? Uh, he he basically said about like uh, he he was kind of playing off of what Amy Adams said, which is uh, that when it comes to making a movie, uh, she prefers um, 
<clears throat> she prefers, uh, you know, like focusing on character more than story. And, um, you know, Andrew Garfield followed up on that, you know, a- agreeing with her and basically saying, yeah, he's like, I-, I-, I signed up to do this. I was promised one thing and then, and then, you know, got handed something completely different. And he said that it pretty, it, it, it oh, really God. broke him down. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm reading it now. Do you, you want me to read the quote? Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. Go ahead and read the quote. In, in regular, in American or my shitty British accent? Just do it normal. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's something that happened with the experience for me where story and character were not actually top of the priority list, ultimately. And I found that really, really tricky, he continued. I signed up to serve the story and to serve this incredible character I've been dressing as since I was three, and then it gets oh. compromised, and it breaks my heart. I got heartbroken a little. So, which, understandably, because if we remember his comments from, like, 2014 and the backlash and falling out between him and Sony, yeah, they kind of fucked that over for him. The second, like, the second I knew that it was over was when Andrew completely (laughs) cucked the the Oh, the Japanese Japanese, board? Yeah, the, the, the Japanese panel um, in New York City, they were having a dinner party for Sony and and Columbia Pictures and everyone was there like all the talk of executives from America and Japan were there and Andrew a half he was he was supposed to be the guest of honor that night mm-hmm. the guest of honor dude and a half out like a half hour before the dinner party he texted um uh what's her name the she used to be the head of Sony oh uh Amy, Amy Pascal something? Amy Pascal, he texts her, not even a phone call, and he says, yeah, I'm not coming. I'm out, bitch. <laughs> what? <laughs> Honestly, that's some top savage Yeah, shit. dude, that's some hardcore dude, disrespect right there. That 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 was the cuck of 2014. Like, god <laughs> damn. I mean, they, they fucked him out of a... They fucked him in a really good role for a franchise that could have actually gone so He was a great so, Spidey. I think he was. I think it was a great Spider-Man. Maybe not the best Peter Parker, but I think it was a dope <laughs> Spider-Man. He should have been in the MCU. It would have been cool. He, Remember he really when, was that was, when that was close to happening? And he's like, yeah, dude, I'd love to be in the MCU. We were supposed to have uh, Oscorp Tower supposed to be in the Avengers. And that was a thing that was like, <laughs> almost going to happen. And then Sony fucked themselves. And now we have Tom, who Nick doesn't like. <laughs> Young That's boy Tom. Corp. Poor. I never uh, really got your thoughts on it, Tim. How do you feel about Tom Holland? I like Tom Holland fine. I th- I think that he works for a younger Peter Parker. Yeah, like yeah. like more of maybe like an Ultimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Around that, uh, yeah, around Parker. Ultimate early early days, Peter Parker. I, st- without... I still think he's a little too young. I think they should have put him like at least one year up. Like fifteen's pretty. I mean, they got him six months after he got bit. I mean, they can't—they can't make Tom Holland seem older than he actually is. Like he's like eighteen or older, I think. He's twenty. I think he's, he's twenty-one. Not. He's twenty-one. He's either twenty yeah. or twenty-one. He's, tw- he's around my age. It doesn't matter how old they made Peter Parker. Tom Holland would still be the same. Yeah. He's just—he's just a—he's just a, a young buck. Yes, he's a young buck. You know, I was he's hoping for a better. Sounds like every new Spider-Man has an accent. <laughs> Wait, what? Nick, every new Spider-Man say? has an accent. What? Sorry. What? Wait, Nick said something. Which I wanted a veteran Spider-Man in the MCU. I didn't want another kid in high school again. Oh, yeah. yeah. Th- 30-year-old Spider-Man would be amazing. Peter back to high school. Yeah, the, yes. It's just the, the only reason I think that it couldn't work is because they'd be like, well, where the fuck have you been for the past eight years? Like, there is, it's almost impossible. Daredevil... Just do some hand wave thing like they did in BVS. Like, they are in hiding. <laughs> Listen, Marvel may not have that worked out flawlessly. Yeah, Marvel may not have the best writing, but come on, man, we don't need to stoop to insulting levels. We don't want to meek mill the universe. <laughs> Are you saying meek mills an insult to rap? No, but I'm saying he takes more L's than Lady. Yeah, of the, the shirt. worst thing you can do when starting up a beloved franchise is making a terrible, off-putting film your audience hates. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Gotta make Poor DC, it. dude. Yeah, maybe one day I'll do a video about DC. But that's <sighs> like we always have to downplay DC in like every episode for at least a couple of seconds. Yeah, so- sorry about that. Like, God, I want to like DC films so much. I like your TV shows. Um, 
Oh, yeah, your TV should do that crossover. Yeah, man, that's gonna be what funny. crossover? <laughs> <laughs> like best I, crossover ever. What are you like, talking about? Well, like best I, team up ever. I like Lucifer and I like Supergirl. Gotham makes me have a hearty fuck of chuckles just to laugh at angry Batman fans. I like dude. So, wait, I like uh, the Flash. okay. I know this is completely off of topic, but I heard Jerome is coming back to Gotham. Yeah, he oh. is, dude. He's oh, I heard he died. Joker. Well, I mean, what? I know he died. Never mind. How is that possible? He died. We saw him. We saw it happen. Dude, there's gonna be three Gotham fans who haven't caught up. And uh, dude, can we not talk them? about DC shit on here? God, <laughs> yeah. you're right. This is the Marvel like goddamn the next topic. <laughs> the next topic is questions. <laughs> so, oh wait, no, no, we no. Have no, viewer no, questions. Wait, 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 <laughs> so, so as I stated before earlier in the podcast, uh, if you go to lootcrate.com forward slash hybrid network and use the promo code bridge10, you can save 10% off of any purchase that you make there. This month's theme is revolution. Get stuff from Assassin's Creed, Firefly, and um, Mr. Robot, among other things in a really cool crate. Get different figures and various nerd gear and stuff, and you get a shirt guaranteed. So, hybridnetwork.com, ah, lootcrate.com slash hybridnetwork, promo code bridge10, save 10%. And on to the X-Men. Yes, on to the X-Men. No, no X-Men, you're a question. <laughs> you, you want to talk about the X-People? We have new rosters for the blue and gold teams. We, we gotta talk about the rosters for at least a minute. Yeah. Oh, Power Rangers? Let's do it. <laughs> go, go. Okay, so, uh. What are we? What are we looking at here? Since since apparently I didn't know until somebody had told me that blue and gold were like old ass X Men teams and they're bringing them back. Yeah, that it was back during um the Jim Lee Chris Claremont days. They had so many members of the team they split the team in half. Damn, bro, team's big as fuck. Yeah. Damn. So they did X Men Blue, which was led by Cyclops, and X Men Gold, which was led by Storm. Oh, no. let, let, from the looks of it, X Men. Uh, Going off of that, we have X Men Gold with Storm, Colossal Nightcrawler, Old Man Logan. Is that Kitty Pride? I think. Yeah, and Rachel Gray. It's Kitty Pride and Rachel yeah, Gray, is, and Kitty the, Pride is the leader. Story. It looks like now. Uh, oh, she is the leader. All right, all right. In X Men Blue, we got a. J- it's the all new X Men again, but Jean Grey is the leader this time. Yep, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Iceman, Beast, and Angel. But joining them Why is Magneto. Why are the all new X Men still a thing? Why are they not sent back to the past yet? Wait, who wants I, them around? Can we talk about the fact? Know, that, it, wait, Magneto's going to be on their team. Yeah, Magneto's going to be their mentor. Yeah, it's lasted way too long. Yeah, it's still- it should have only been like the first like five issues as a mini series, and then they get sent back after seeing how shitty things got. Yep. Damn. They shouldn't have stuck Damn. around and fucked everything no, Black up. No, Magneto. I read the Mac first Nebra. volume, and after that, I was like, "I am done with this." Actually, spo- like, spoiler for uh, Death of X. Did you hear about what happened? Who died recently? Nope. Nope. Cyclops. No one cares. You don't want to talk about it. Nope. No one cares. Yeah, Cyclops is dead. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> Bear backup Cyclops. Oh. Well, Dude, all right, Cyclops then. is the best X Man. He he should be, but for some reason, he just isn't. He's never been. Whatever happened? He's to the... a huge tool. What, yeah, that's Xavier why. Xavier spent so long building him up as a leader, only to watch him fail so hard. And the, now he's dead. Black, and now he's dead. Black Bolt killed yep. him. <laughs> well, technically, a virus killed him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. A, vi- a virus called the market. Right. Anyways, uh, do do we have anything to say so we can go into your questions? Get these. No. Uh, I guess the one thing I have to say is that uh, I don't have high hopes for either team. One, because one's all new X-Men. The second one, because in the opening statements by Mark Guggenheim, have the, start off by saying, I feel Kitty Pride is the right person, which is the words that always start the sentences that lead to shitty Kitty Sue runs in Bendis style. <laughs> Started by Mark Guggenheim, so she's probably just going to be Felicity. Oh God! Please don't. At least give Kitty some respect. All right, so let's go into viewer questions. The first one's from Waru, who asks, "Ask Marvel Leap, is Kamala waifu? Uh, when she's legal. 
<laughs> what kind of question is that, Waru? Come on. How, how, how to be old fair, is she most waifus like, aren't. She's like 16, 17 at the most right now. I think she's still a junior. Well, that's she's the 16, age of most 17, Japanese 16, waifus. 17, shit. Well, Waru, Bro. if you are under the age of 18, she might as well be your waifu. If she, if you're 18 or under, yeah. But considering that's a 16-year-old fictional character, nah. Not re- she gotta wait. To be fair, the fictional part basically makes it non... Like, it can't be illegal regardless because fictional characters don't have rights under the law. Doesn't make it's so it weird, Tim. Doesn't make no, it any Tim. less weird. That doesn't take the yeah. weird out of it. And, Tim, if well, I don't know why you're fixating on it because she's not real. <laughs> Plus, she's not waifu for me regardless. Oh, see, that's what it is. <laughs> what? Dude, you're trying there's to other characters who I'd, put, who I'd put above her. She's fine as a character on her own, but no. I don't really do, like, waifu things. She's waifu just because uh, she has a really good pop model out that's really hard to get at Walgreens. Yeah, I'm still looking for it. <laughs> Dude, I was actually in Walgreens the other day looking for it, and I didn't find it. Yeah. I, 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 I saw Will got it. I saw, no, I saw a Moana pop <laughs> at my local really? Walgreens. Oh, I want to see them. I do, too. I need to see it. Uh... Anyways, next question is also from Marvel asking, which comic was worse? Cobble War number two? <laughs> Civil War number two? Or Death of X number four? Ooh. Mmm. Well, considering I didn't read either, but I heard about what happened. Um, I want to say... I want to say Civil War because it's been going on longer and it was a lot more unnecessary. Granted, so is Death of X. I don't know. Maybe they're tied. What do you guys think? I'm getting really sick of Marvel doing big events and then having to delay or, or uh, they they delay them. I've seen some get canceled. It's really bad, yeah. and I would have to say that Civil War Two is probably the worst. Probably Civil War Two because I don't care that Cyclops died. I already knew he was dead because I read the first issue of Extraordinary X Men, which takes place after Death of X. Yep. Savage. Oh well, I mean that those three Cyclops fans out there are going to be very upset with you, dude. You watch in the comments; they'll they'll go. <laughs> remember, watch. remember when I summoned the uh, one of the two <laughs> um, Gambit yeah. fans, and the second yeah. one showed up like two weeks later. Yeah, well, because the thing with Cyclops <laughs> is that I've I've never really liked him as a character. Like the most I've liked him is in X Men Evolution, and even then, I just thought he was okay. I liked like, him in be, I... be, be, my Beyond name. that, like, in the films, like, when he died, I didn't really care, so I don't know why there was so much outrage when he died in Last Stand. I mean, I liked him in the films, but that was... He barely did anything in the films. Yeah, I, I liked him in the films, and I liked him in Evolution, and that was about it. Granted, I ca- uh, he was a little bit more interesting in Evolution. I'm like, oh, hey, look at you doing stuff, still trying to be, like, a goody two-shoes big brother. Like, at least they gave him a character. Yeah, it's a... Basically, his character in that was Professor X wanted him to be an example for everyone, but he has, like, this horrible, shitty power that he can't control, and he gets stressed by all the pressure that gets put on him. Yeah. Yep. And then in Which Wolverine... Which they, they, they cover sometimes, but they don't do it well in the comics, because yeah. they still try to present him as being a good leader and having shitty stress issues. And, and then in Watt X, he was just mopey about Gene being gone. Yeah. Where's Gene? I gotta find Gene. Get out of here! <laughs> like, come on, man. We know Emma Frost is gonna suck your dick. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> that ice cold British blowjob. Uh, that that's a callback if anyone remembers that. <laughs> oh wait, no, different conversation. My bad. <laughs> Anyways, there, dude, there, I want that. That Emma Frost job. That snow yeah. job. All right, we we know what Nick likes, British bitches. But our third question from I thought she's from Boston. She is. <laughs> yeah, I think she just. Do- I think it was stated in the comics that she does a fake British accent. Oh wow, that just makes her worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's better. With, with or without the accent, Nick. Both. Both. All right. Uh, third question, Bar asks. Do you think that Marvel should make shared animated movie universes like DC with the JL vs. Teen Titans movie leading into the Judas Contract film? Uh, they I... They kind of already did, because the, the Heroes United... They had the Heroes United movies. 
that ha for Captain America and Iron Man that with okay. and Hulk that led into one another. Okay, but they just like, kind of stopped because the movies didn't sell well. Yeah, but actually, like entertaining films that people want to see. Well, they'd have to start making movies outside of the uh, animated universe they're doing now. It doesn't seem likely at this point. I I think they should tackle it because they had they had kind of like a weird cover on that a couple of years ago, but the movies weren't that great, if I remember. Because they I mean, had, like, I this ultimate I mean, films. the only one of their, like, animated movies that I didn't really like was Invincible Iron Man. The other ones I thought were good to okay. I liked it when I was a kid, but then I grew up and rewatched it. I'm like, ooh. Now I see what everyone uh, was talking about. What do you think, Luke? Well, <laughs> I... Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, there... There's always a lot to say about it, but, like, my whole thing is, like, still, I'm still riding this, this sort of, like, vague hope that, uh, they're gonna pull together their new animation department that they supposedly assembled along with their game department and whatnot. Um, they want to do, like, you know, like, a, a rebranding of their animation, but I just, I don't know how deep Disney XD has, has a hold of them you know, how much sway they have. I would just love for them to be able to get artists and writers that are currently writing DC films and make, like, a an actual shared universe uh, for movies. Like, uh, because, what, wasn't this, like, a viewer question a couple months ago? Like, what, if you guys were to see, like, an animated movie of anything from the Marvel Universe, what would it be? And mm -hmm. I think we all talked, and we all agreed that, like, maybe Civil War done in, like, a cinematic animation would be really cool. Um, mm -hmm. I, would, I would love to see um, Secret Wars... That would be really awesome to see. Um, Spider Man. Oh, actually, yeah. Spy Spider Verse would be great if done right. And I'm not talking about like you know. I know we already seen bits of that on, um, what is it? Ultimate Spider Man, which is now canceled. But uh, <laughs> I, I just uh, there are oh, so yeah. many things they could do. I I, I would love uh, Waru for them to to make a, a shared animated movie universe. That would be fantastic if done right. If they could do it on the scale that DC does it. Yeah. And the quality that DC um, makes their films, then yes, I, just please, 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 please do it. <laughs> so middling to good. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the same quality. No, better. I want better. <laughs> yeah, I, I... No, but Tim likes the animated movies, like Jail vs. Teen Titans. And I like the animated movies, it's just that for DC, like... They, for all, as much praise as they get, like I always feel like at least half their movies or more are just sort of okay. Yeah, that, they're like Son of Batman or them. Batman versus Robin. Son of Batman was eh. Yeah, that Batman versus eh. Robin. I always forget happened. Actually, yeah, I, I forget about Batman versus Robin. I like what about Son that of Batman, Batman Bad movie. Blood? Bad Blood was a bad movie. Yeah, Bad Blood yeah. was weak. I, no, it was good because Flashpoint. Flashpoint they had that lit. ninjas line. Flashpoint was, I think, actually Flashpoint. Justice League Gods and Monsters yeah. uh, were, are probably, like, the two best out so far, in my I opinion. I think the best well, one is Superman versus the Elite. Oh, uh, well, I, I, I well I'm, I'm talking one. about, like, their new... Yeah, of the like, new universe. Of, like, the new 52 versions of, of the movie universe. Yeah, because basically most of the uh, ones... Well, yeah. Gods and Monsters isn't in the new 52 universe, though. It's its own separate thing. I mean, I think Who? he means, like, post-Flashpoint no. films. Yes, yes, I mean post... Yeah. Okay, yes, thank you for correcting me. Post-Flashpoint films is what I mean. Yeah, I, yeah. I, Justice League, or I mean, Superman versus the Elite was good. I really enjoyed that one. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. yeah but anyways, let's, let's so finally, one question. more question. One more question from Jalen asking: Did watching Peggy Carter make her death in Civil War impact you more than if Peggy didn't get a show? I have been meaning to finish that show. Cause I saw the first two episodes. I actually quite enjoyed it, and I think the idea of a period piece TV show is a good idea. But especially if it's a miniseries, so we don't have to worry about something like some of the other shows we've had that just may overstay their welcome a little bit. Like, it kind of gives you a set time frame and kind of set ideas and things for her character that they established. Like, I think it was well written and stuff. Uh, and she got, you know, she got her two seasons. Uh, had I finished them, I'm sure it probably would have. But even with the little bit that I knew it was, just because I like Peggy as a character... Like, I knew she had to die at some point, because she was, like, in her 80s by the time Civil War happens. Like, well, and then uh, the news came out, it's like, yeah, so Peggy's dying. It's like, I mean, what did we think was going to happen? Everybody lives? Yeah, <laughs> this, no. this isn't Doctor Who. 
Everybody <laughs> lives. Only once. No, for all... On that subject, though, uh, I don't know if it gave it more of an impact, because in the movie, like, her dying didn't have a huge impact on me, but it definitely gave more context to thing that sh things that Sharon said. Like, it had Peggy do more on her own, at own as opposed to doing stuff behind Steve, which gave her, like, a stronger backing, I feel. Yeah. What do the rest of you think? Nah, Peggy Carter season three. Let's get it. Wait, what? Dude, no. <laughs> Haley Haley Atwell is so done with that character. She wanted to be out of like playing that character altogether. So. I'm so mad. They didn't even show Shields getting made. That's what they were advertising in the first season. I, so they bad. really just need to do one season just to finish it off to settle the plot from last season and found Shield and then end it. Yeah, like yeah. That's, they literally all they have to do is come back for like literally like fucking four episodes in their yeah, game. Yeah, I was gonna say you could do that in like four or five hour long episodes. Yeah, they could just have an offhand reference like this happened, done. No, uh, they need to finish it, and that I think <coughs> I think that what was, happened uh, to Chad background. Michael Murray? He died. I, I, <laughs> he died. That's why yeah. when Peggy died in the in the movie, I kind yeah, of that, that, I was like, fucking, I want to see what happened. Yeah, that Poor Asian Jarvis. Carter show is awful though. How do how do you guys like that? What? I liked it. I like I yeah. like what it's I saw. It's like the I worst saw... superhero show I've ever seen in my life. It's not a superhero the show. <laughs> worst comic book Marvel show ever. I I don't no. believe you. <laughs> the worst comic book Marvel show is pr like one of them is uh, Nick Fury, Agent of Shield. That's that, well, that was, was fun. That, that was a pilot movie. It's not really a show. Well, it was you know it was on TV. If that counts, then Generation X counts. Oh God. <laughs> Oh, oh! <laughs> Wait, that only aired a pilot, didn't it? Yeah, yes, the same like, with Nick Fury, like I just said. Uh, Wait, Nick that Fury, Wonder Woman counts too. I that have, Nick I Fury have... movie was good though. No, Wonder Woman didn't actually air. Yeah, I have Generation Dude. X somewhere on a computer. I haven't watched it, but I remember seeing the trailer, and it just it hurt a part of me that's a fan of uh, Adam Warren because I know he used to write it or do art on the book, and I'm like, ah. Oh. Uh, Everyone loves weirdly white Jubilee. Yeah. Oh yeah, all white Jubilee. It's like, how much do people not care about Jubilee? They couldn't even get her race right. Like, yeah. There's blind to a character. There's colorblind to a character, and then there's Jubilee. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Man, God, why do people keep wanting Jubilee to be a thing? Like she can be if she actually uses her powers for something insane, like killing a man by setting off a firecracker that'll, in his brain. That'll never happen. She's useless. Yeah, no one's... She's one of the most useless characters in the entire Marvel Universe. You have to have a but big... she was on the 90s X-Men animated series, so she gets a free pass forever. Okay, well, whatever. Yeah, wasn't she like the, uh, the view lens for the, the kids? You get to yes. see what the X-Men is like through the lens of Jubilee. Why not someone like Rogue, who's cool? Or, or Kitty Pride. Oh, wait, they tried that with Pride of the X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> remember that an Australian Wolverine I remember that Will yep. I don't want to have to cuck you buddy you're not yep. we're closing but... out the show yeah I, <laughs> I feel that we've spoken enough yeah, enough has been said the time is dead the time is done so let's end this show so with all that don't forget to leave comments and questions in the comment section with the hashtag AskMarvelEat if you want to send us some fan art, you can you can do that too. Drop some links at the bottom to your deviant art pages that everyone clearly has. Um, but this is the Marvel Eat Podcast. I've been your host, Will. With me, we have had Luke. This is a horrible experience. Michael. This is the worst episode. Nick. Hi Thanks, there. Michael. Luke, I Michael. I hate this episode and Asian Carter. <laughs> Nick, who hates many, <laughs> who hates many things, Marvel. <laughs> but it's still a fan. And our guest boy, Tim. Uh, later, everyone. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to Hybrid Network. We will see you guys next week.